Mr. Majeski's Anatomy 32 class, Chapter 1, Part 1.4. So now we're looking at the anatomical position. And this is a very specific position that is referred to whenever uh, you talk about the anatomy of the human body. And specifically, this position is of a person standing up on their feet, facing forward, with their palms also facing forward. And this is very important to remember. This is the position that you should refer to when you're talking about parts of a human body, no matter how that body is actually positioned. Now, when you look at the human body, you see that it comes in a lot of different regions. The large regions include the cephalic region, which is the head, the cervical region, or the neck, the trunk, which includes the thoracic region, the abdominal region, and the pelvic region, the upper limbs, and the lower limbs. On closer look, you can see that each of these regions have many small subregions. So for the cephalic region, you also have the cranial region and the facial region. And the cranial region also includes the occipital region, which is the base of the skull on the posterior side. While the facial region includes such things as the frontal region or forehead, temporal regions or the temples, the orbital or ocular regions, or the eyes, the optic regions, or the ears, the buccal regions, or the cheeks, the nasal region, the oral region, and the mental region, or the chin. Uh, in the cervical region, there are no subregions. My apologies. I'll try to fix that in the future. That was a joke. In the trunk, you have, on the anterior side, the sternal region for the breastbone, the mammary region for the breasts, the umbilical region for the navel, the coxal region for the hip, and the inguinal region for the groin, and the pubic region. On the posterior view, you have the scapular region, the vertebral region for the entire spinal cord, the sacral region, which is the region between the hips, the coccygeal region, or the tailbone, and also the perineal region, which is the space between the anus and the external genitalia. For each upper limb, you have an acromial region or shoulder, the axillary region or armpit, the brachial region for the arm, the antecubital region for the front of the elbow, the antibrachial region for the forearm, the carpal region for the wrist, the palmar or volar region for the palm, and the digital or phalangeal region for the fingers. The entire hand can also be referred to as the manual region, and the thumb has its own little name. It's called the pollux region. On the posterior side of the upper limb, you have the ocranial or cubital region for the back of the elbow, also known as the funny bone, and the dorsum for the back of the hand. When you look at the lower limbs, you see that you have the on the anterior side, you have the femoral region for the thigh, the patellar region for the kneecap, the crawl region for the leg. The pedal is the word you can use to describe the entire foot. That also can be broken down to the tarsal or ankles. The digital or phalangeal regions for the toes. The top of the foot is referred to as the dorsum, while the bottom of the foot is called the plantar. You also have the name hollux region for the great toe, so it has its own name. And then the heel is also known as the calcaneal region, which makes sense because that's similar to the name of the bone for that area. The buttock or gluteal region is also considered part of the lower limb. And you have the popliteal region for the hollow behind the knee. Now, other ways to break up the human body is by looking at various sections of the body. And these sections are often divided using planes, which you can imagine as a giant flat piece of glass cutting through the body. So the different kinds of planes include the frontal plane. The frontal plane will then break the body up, or the structure, or the organ, into a front and a back. You then also have the sagittal planes. The sagittal planes cut through the body, giving you a left and a right. 
Now, if this sagittal plane goes through the exact middle of that body or organ, it's referred to as a mid-sagittal plane. And then the left and the right should be approximately equal and look basically like each other, unless there's something going on. However, you can also have a parasagittal plane if it does not cut evenly through the body or organ. And then there's the transverse plane, which will give you a top and a bottom, or a superior region and an inferior region. Now, when you look at the various structures or parts of a body or an organ or whatever, um, there are many directional terms used to show the relationship between these parts of the body. Now, the first set of directional terms that we're going to cover is medial and lateral. Medial means closer to the midline, and lateral means further away from the midline. So, for instance, in this image, we see that the ulna is lateral to the gallbladder, so it is further from the midline while the ulna is medial to the radius. It is closer to the midline. Next set of directional terms is anterior versus posterior. Anterior being toward what we think of as the front of the body and posterior being toward the back. So in this image you see that the heart is anterior to the spinal cord. Another set of directional terms is superior and inferior. These terms are for all body parts that are not in one of the limbs or when you're comparing a part of a limb to some other part of the body. And superior is toward the head, inferior toward the tail. So for instance, in this picture, we see that the gallbladder is inferior to the esophagus while the esophagus is superior to the urinary bladder. Now for the limbs, we have the directional terms proximal and distal. This should only be used for parts of the body found on one limb. Now proximal means closer to where the limb attaches to the trunk, while distal means further away from where the limb attaches to the trunk. So for instance, in this image, we see that the radius is distal to the humerus, and the radius is proximal to the phalanges. Another set of directional terms is superficial versus deep. Superficial meaning more toward the outside, while deep meaning more toward the inside. So in this case, we see that the heart is deep to the skin. There are, of course, some other terms and terminology in this chapter and in this section that you will, of course, have to be responsible for. So study hard.